Hello everyone, this is Sorry Match Steve bringing you the fourth story of the scary survival story, The Corruption of the Minecraft Gods. Soaring and Zarin arrived at the bunker and met up with everyone else. Kazuma walked up to Soaring. I've got about 10 hermits that were in badly injured by regular spirits, he told him. What is going on? There's going to be a meeting for the leaders, Soaring said quietly. Get the injured into the medical bay. Are there any more from the other factions? Rage's family and Tess Steve, Exuma told him. We're just lucky that it wasn't a lot more. Soaring looked at the ground. Meet us in the control room, he said. I'll explain everything. Kazuma left and Soaring punched the truck. They're in danger because of me, he told Zarin. How many more times do they have to be sacrificed? They came to help you, Zarin said. They knew what was bound to happen. They went to the control room and saw Exuma, Rage, US Dream, and Eve. What is going on? asked Eve. I thought the spirits were on our side. Irene and Morpheus have betrayed us, Sorin told them. It has been foretold in the prophecy. Everyone has shifted in their chairs uncomfortably. It is this the prophecy that was forbidden to be talked about? Ex asked Izuma. Yes, Sorin said. But now we have to talk about it. Years ago, a seer had a vision of the two gods becoming corrupted and destroying Minecraft. There will be a team of crafters that will defeat them, but at a price. Three of them will make the ultimate sacrifice in defeating the gods. This prophecy is set in stone. Who are the crafters? Eurystream asked. I figured it out, Sorin told them. Exuma, Eurystream, Rage, and Eve. You were all in the prophecy. One from Hermitcraft, two from Scary Survival, and one from Bro Block City, Xuma stated. You aren't in the prophecy. I thought you would be. The prophecy has me doing something else, Sorin told him. Cub fan rushed in, his face covered in oil. Cub, what is going on? Xuma asked. Come quickly, he said. I've just made a discovery. The leaders rushed after him to see the discovery. They reached the garage and saw that Cub made a different vehicle. Cub, how did you do this? Exuma asked. This vehicle can withstand god powers, Cub said, but it can also weaken them. Watch this. Cub pressed a button and shrunk several blocks into a miniature block. Exuma picked it up and stared at it. Can you do this? it to a person? He asked. Yes, Cub said. It will take out Irene and Morpheus. They won't be able to use their powers. Wheels up in 20 minutes. Xuma said, We'll go to where they are. Xuma, Eurostream, Rage, and Eve left Soaring and Cub in the garage to grab their gear. Cub approached Soaring and looked at him. Why aren't you going with them? He asked. Soaring shook his head. The prophecy had them going into battle. He told him, If I interfere, it could mean the end of Minecraft as we know it. Eurostream and Eve packed their bags and didn't speak. Eurostream saw the spirit weapons and grabbed them. I wouldn't grab those, Eve said quietly. They would sense those in a heartbeat. Eurostream put them back on the shelf on the shelf and heard he heard Eve cry. Everything alright? he asked. I haven't gone into battle without test Steve, she said. I'm more of a scientist than in, than a warrior. What should I do? Eurostream hugged her. Create something that will help you, he said. There's a reason why the prophecy chose us. Soin should have been in the prophecy, she said. There's something he didn't tell us. Eurostream's expression darkened. I fear that his path is different from ours, he said. We should get to the truck. They left the room and headed back to the garage. The chosen crafters men in the garage and put their bags in the truck. Exuma shook hands with Sorin. Make sure everything runs smoothly, Exuma told him. Don't worry, Sorin said. I got everything locked down. Exuma got in the truck and started it. The chosen crafters drove out of the bunker and the bunker went into lockdown. Sorin turned to Mumbo and Tango. Want security cameras recording 24-7, he told them, and he traps laid out. Only people in here can disable the traps. Are you sure you want to do this? Mumbo asked. I mean, this bunker is always secured. 
As long as the Minecraft gods are hunting us, Soren told him, we're not safe. I already got tripwires laid out, Tango told him. Mumbo can do the rest. Mumbo laid the rest of the traps, and the bunker was secured more than ever. Green approached them with TNT. Green, what are you doing? Tango asked. Green's eyes were pitch black, he, and he had a crazed smile. The deletion of the crafters had begun, he yelled. He ignited the TNT, and Soaring lunged at it. It blew up, and Soaring absorbed it. He yelled in pain, but saw that everyone was, in, was okay. Soaring, we need to get you to the medical bay, Mumble said. Tango tackled Green, and Green panicked. What's going on? he asked. Tango, why are you on top of me? Tango, he doesn't remember, Soren said sternly. I fear that we have a spirit in here. Soren took out a spirit gun and scanned the area. As I feared, he muttered, this bunker has a spirit from the first spirit war. Come out and show yourself. The spirit appeared before them, and Soren knew who he was. Spirit Steve, Soren said weakly. Why would you do this? I have no choice, Spirit Steve said. Irene and Morpheus have complete control over me. I have to kill you. Spirit Steve sent an energy wave at Soaring, and Soaring deflected it. Soaring then shot plasma lasers at Spirit Steve. Spirit Steve vaporized and yelled in pain. Soaring looked at the scanner and saw that Spirit Steve was the only one. I fear that he was warning us, he said to the others. What was he warning us about? Tango asked. About the impending doom that was coming for us, Soaring told him. <clears throat> the Chosen Crafters reached the summit where the Minecraft gods were. They reached the throne, but no one was there. Looks like the throne has been empty for several months, Eve told them. Even the brazens are cold. Kazuma gazed over the edge and saw something horrifying. And a good thing too, he said. Come over here. The others approached the edge and saw the OG crafters in cages. How long have they been here? Eurostream exclaimed. Eve checked their vitals. After the third time Hades was taken down, she said softly, They're alive, but the life force is being drained. We have to help them, Eurostream said. If they die, then Minecraft goes with them. The Chosen Crafters tried to open the cages, but they wouldn't open. Curses, Eve said. They've used a spell that can only be broken by someone that knows both the enchantment language and Latin. Oh, so now we need Soaring said Eurostream sarcastically. I knew he was a part of this, it said Exuma. He wasn't telling us the whole story. I think he's doing this because we need to learn Latin, said Rage. He gave me the book to learn it. Well then do it, yelled Eurostream. Rage started learning it. Thunder rolled overhead and lightning crackled. The cages opened and the OG crafters fell out of onto the ground. They opened their eyes and stared confusedly. Where are we? asked Dan. I thought we were going to a convention. Hang on, said Captain Sparkles. Minecraft looks different. What year is it? It is 2041, said Exuma. You guys have been trapped for 17 years. 17 years? exclaimed Stampy. That's impossible. Does anyone know we're gone? No one knows about you guys said Eurostream. The OG crafters are a thing of the past. The OG crafters looked at each other. Even though they didn't age, they knew time had passed so suddenly. Who did this to us? asked Dan. Irene and Morpheus, said Rage. We'll help you, said Captain Sparkles. Whatever you need, we'll do it. We'll need the help, said Exuma. 
The Chosen Crafters and the OG Crafters left the Minecraft God's Temple <laughs> and went off to search for the new location. Sorin and Zarin were in the break room when Green ran into the room. What's wrong? Sorin asked. Mumble's trapped, Green said. He was sucked into an interdimensional portal. Sorin and Zarin stood up and rushed out of the break room. They saw the portal and the crafters surrounding it. Nobody goes in, yelled Sorin. Zarin examined the portal and walked back to Sorin. Just as I feared, he told him. Irene and Morpheus had linked the original Scary Survival World to this realm. I fear that Mumbo is fighting for survival there. We have to help him, Sorin said. It is my mission to keep everyone safe. Then let's go in there, Zarin said. They jumped into the portal, leaving everyone in the bunker. <clears throat> On the outskirts of the Minecraft realm, Irene and Morpheus were in deep conversation. I fear that we've been compromised, Irene told him. The Chosen Crafters are on our tail. It'll be soon that they'll discover our location. Patience is a virtue, young goddess, said Morpheus. Haven't I not trained you to see the, into the future? Yes, you have, said Irene. But I fear that the prophecy is true. The prophecy can be changed, said Morpheus sternly. The old prophecy of Hades said that he would reign in the new Minecraft realm. Look what really happened. The crafters defeated him, and now that will be their downfall. Irene looked at Morpheus in fear. I have come to like them, said Irene. They've helped me in a lot of battles. I have no love for them, said Morpheus. They've decimated the realm and should be destroyed. Now I need to rest. Those spirits I sent to destroy Sorin have tired me. Morpheus left, and Irene felt worried for the Chosen Crafters. I have to warn them, she said. <clears throat> the Chosen Crafters were in a dark oak forest when they heard two wolves howling. Those howls f sound familiar, Exuma said. Are those the wolf brothers? Two wolves appeared from behind the trees and circled around them. They transformed into humans and smiled. Xuma, it's good to see you again, said the one on the right. Daro, said Exuma. This is where you and your brother have been? We've been traveling throughout the lands, said Anton. Where's Sorin and Zarin? They're not on this quest, Xuma told them. This is the quest for the Chosen Crafters. Daro's eyes widened. And not the prophecy, he stammered. I knew that the full moon last night was a deeper red than last year's. Brother, you read too much of that magic, said Anton. Only a fool wouldn't, said Daro sternly. It's not safe for you guys in this forest. There's a woodland mansion just a few clicks from here. The people in there are acting more strangely than normal. Xuma gripped his sword. How? He asked. They've turned into monsters, Daro told them. They only come out at night in this forest. My brother and I have to keep fighting them to keep them from getting out. I fear that it's from the curse. What curse? Xuma asked. Daro went to speak, but the forest started getting dark. You must get out of here, he said. Hurry! They all heard growling and saw vindicators, vexes, pillagers, and evokers. Their eyes were blood red and their skin was peeled off. They've turned into the undead, Rage yelled. How are we supposed to defeat them? Eurostream shot a bow into the head of one of the vindicators and it fell. Aim for the head, he yelled. They all got their bows out and shot them. One by one, the illager zombies fell. They celebrated as the last one fell, but heard a loud growl. They turned to the path to see 
a Ravager zombie charging at them, its teeth full of blood from its last supper. Any ideas how we're going to defeat that? Rage asks Eri Stream. Eve stepped forward and threw a potion. The Ravager zombie screamed and transformed back into its original state. I've learned about this, she told them. If the Minecraft gods are tapping into necromancy, then we need to counteract the effects. The Chosen Crafters and the Wolf Brothers left the Dark Oak Forest to search for the new temple. Sorin and Zarin arrived at the original Skyri survival realm, and Sorin felt weak. He collapsed to his knees and gasped for air. The air has been poisoned, he told Zarin. There's no chance Mumbo is alive. Zarin gazed at the village that was in front of them and saw Mumbo wearing a hazmat suit. Are you sure about that? He asked. Mumbo came rushing to them and put a rebreather on Zarin. He looked, then looked at Zarin, very puzzled. Why doesn't the poisonous air not affect you? He asked Zarin. I have been tortured for years, said Zarin. I was also made to be Hades' secret weapon during the first war. Instead, I defected to the side of good. They heard noises from within the fog and took out the weapons. I've been hearing those noises, Mumbo said, but I can't make out what they are saying. Zarin closed his eyes and listened. You should not have come back, said the voice. You should have known that this realm is now dangerous. We had to come to get our friend out of here, Sorin told the voice. The portal opened up. Morpheus and Irene are planning an attack on every crafter. Just as I fear, said the voice. Come quickly. There's not much time. They followed the voice into a house, and they found a figure that they didn't want to find. Corrupt Steve, exclaimed Sorin. You've been trapped in this realm for this long? Corrupt Steve dropped his eyes in sadness. Indeed I have, said Corrupt Steve. I was forgotten in the code, yet I was waiting for the portal to open once again. How do you know about the prophecy? asked Sorin. Corrupt Steve's expression darkened, and he gripped the chair. I wish to not, to not speak of it, he said. I was told of it by Hades when he trusted me. When I turned on him, I was alone. Now I roam alone and forgotten. I haven't seen sunlight in 17 years. Soaring felt sorry for him, a powerful being brought to his knees. We'll get you out of here, Soaring promised. The portal's just on the other side. Then we better get moving, Krupp Steves told him. They raced out to the portal, one and one by one, they went in. They came out to see Irene standing in front of them. Irene, Soren said, what are you doing here? I came to warn you, she said. The crafters that were chosen by the prophecy aren't the full version of the prophecy. You are also in the prophecy. Soren looked at her, stunned. But I read the full prophecy, he told her. If I make any adjustments, the plan fails. You must help them, she pleaded. Morpheus is planning an assault on the different realms in five days. I have prepared some armor for you. She summoned the armor and Sorin put it on. It gave him immense power. How come you're helping us? He asked. I thought you wanted to eliminate all crafters. No, she said. I have come to love you guys more than ever. You are my family. I must head back. Morpheus is waking up from his slumber. Head to where the other chosen crafters are. Safe travels, brave warrior. Irene faded in a white light, and Zarin and Mumbo looked at Zarin. I have a feeling that it's a trap, Zarin told him. It's not, Krupp Steve said. I read into the true prophecy, and Zarin is a part of it. In fact, he is the main person for it. Zarin gazed at the map of the realm. If he went, he could die, but if he didn't go, everyone would perish. He made his final decision. I'm going, 
he told them. If it means the end of me, then so be it. He walked over out of the bunker, leaving Zarin, Mumbo, and Corrupt Steve speechless. <clears throat> the chosen crafters arrived at the castle on a mountain. Dara went by the river to refill his canister. Anton sniffed the air and walked back to the others. No signs of hostiles in the area, he told the others, but I do recommend caution. Xuma looked at the castle. That does look familiar, he said. I feel as though I've seen it years ago. Aristrum gazed at it. His eyes widened. It's Sorin's old wizarding castle, he told them. Goat castle. How is it still here? It must have had a protection spell on it, Rach said. Brilliant idea from him. The doors opened and two villagers came out of the castle. Gerald, look at this, said the first villager. Do my eyes deceive me? No, Bob, said Gerald. It's them. They've come back. Wait, we're soaring, said Gerald. He should be here. Everyone heard a sonic boom and saw Sorin fly overhead. He landed in the middle of them. Sorry I'm late, he told them. Traffic was a nightmare. Zuma approached Sorin confused. Thought the prophecy didn't have you, he said. I didn't read the entire prophecy. He told them, now we have the full ranks. How are we getting into the temple? Zuma asked. Irene is helping us. Soin said, she's making sure that we make it there safely to defeat Morpheus. Are you sure we can trust her? Eurystrom asked. She literally betrayed us. She had no choice. Soin told him, Morpheus is the bigger Minecraft god. She needs our help in defeating him. The Chosen Crafters thought about it, then looked at Soin. I'm in. Ximus said, let's kick some Minecraft god's butt. Rage said, "It'll make some. I'll make some potions to enhance our abilities." Eve told them, "If it's a fight they want," Yorastream said, "Then it's a fight they'll get." Soin looked at Daryl and Anton, waiting for their response. They nodded. "We're going to. We're right behind you, friend," Daryl told him. Soin saw Hero Brian leaning against a tree, listening to the conversation. Always the hero. He muttered. Herobrine walked away from the group, but Sorin stopped him. Aren't you going to help? He asked. Herobrine chuckled. I was only surprised, supposed to leave them until you arrived. It is your turn. Herobrine vanished, and Sorin felt a dark presence. Get out your weapons, he yelled. They got out their weapons and looked at the castle doors. They heard a low growl and saw a three-headed dog come out of it. Since when did you get a three-headed dog? Zuma asked. Cerberus? Sorin asked. What are you doing here? Cerberus sat down and stared at Sorin, but growled at the others. I've heard about this dog. Eurystheim said, doesn't the Greek god of the underworld own him? Yes, Sorin told him, but he comes to me from time to time to warn him about something. Greek Hades and Minecraft Hades are different. I feel like Greek Hades is sending me a message. Cerberus, where's the message? Cerberus showed the, that the paper message was on his leg, and Sorin grabbed it. He opened it and read it. Dear Sorin, I know about what's going on in the Minecraft realm. Things aren't going good aren't good in the real world. Our universes are connecting somehow, as you can tell. You must go to these coordinates with your team to discuss with me a battle plan. I know you can win. Sincerely, Hades. <clears throat> Everyone looked at each other and realized this was the final operation. They looked at Sorin, waiting for his words of wisdom. I know that some of you are going to die, he said, but there could be a slight chance we'll make it out. 
Zuma put his hand on Sorin's shoulder. We've come this far all these years, he said with a smile. It's time that we face fate with our heads held high. Sorin gazed upon the craft, chosen crafters who were ready to fight beside him. Then let's save Minecraft, he said. They reached the real world portal and went through it. As Sorin went in, a deep growl was sounded from the caverns below the portal. Have to warn the gods about their treachery, said the beast. Their time is coming. The chosen crafters got out of the portal and they saw that they were in New York City. Sorry, didn't this portal link with Salt Lake City, Utah last time? asked Rage. Yes, Sorin said. It must have moved the last time we were here. Though, that would be physically impossible. This portal cannot be moved any, by any means necessary. By mortal tools, yes, said a voice. But God's power can. <clears throat> the chosen crafters turned to see Greek Hades walking towards them. Hades, Sorin said, bowing. It's good to see you. Hades smiled slightly and gazed at the others. He then focused on Eri's stream. Ah, you destroyed my Minecraft counterpart, he said politely. Sorry for the trouble he caused you. Eri's stream gripped his sword tightly. Hades turned towards Rage. Make sure when you get back to your family that they are taken care of. He said to him. Rage was taken aback to this. Of course, he said. Hades turned to a building and made the doors disappear. He entered to the darkness and turned. Are you all coming? He asked. The chosen crafters went with him. They reappeared in Hades' throne room. It was nothing like Minecraft Hades' throne room. Hades sat down and had his skeleton warriors bring out six more chairs. The chosen crafter sat down and Hades cleared his throat. Soaring, he said, you know the full risks of this mission. You know, know the full prophecy. The others do not. Will you do your part in fulfilling your destiny? What's he saying, Soaring? Eve asked. I will, Soaring told him. Good, Hades said. I don't want any casualties in this mission. Therefore, I am making you a leader. He already is, Kazuma said. He's been leading us way before this mission. Hades faced to Kazuma. I am well aware of what has happened in previous missions, he said in forced politeness. Doesn't change the fact that there were casualties in previous missions. Dr. Traoris was killed by corrupt spirits back in 2024. Sorin was put in a cryo chamber from 2024 to 2039. He was also taken over by the admin in hopes of killing all crafters. All crafters were killed by Zarin in a double agent agenda. But I'm not going to count that one. Zarin died from controlling Minecraft Hades in his own body. These are all casualties that have happened in previous missions. All because of me, Sorin summed up. I've put everyone in danger. Everyone looked at him. Child, said Hades, you didn't put anyone in danger. It was fate that led you to protect them. Sorin relaxed a little hearing those words. Eve looked at Sorin cautiously, then looked at Hades. Sir, she said, when you told Sorin about the Minecraft gods wanting to move all life from Minecraft, how would they intend to do that? Hades' expression tightened as he heard that question. <clears throat> they intend to eliminate the player from their real world counterpart, he said. You all have souls embedded in you. But your real world counterparts are in grave danger. Who are our counterparts? Rage asked. 
Yours is a guy named Gary," said Hades. "I'd recommend saving him. Your stream, your counterpart is named Jordan." Zuma and Eve, I don't have a counterpart for you. It's odd that you guys don't exist in the code that player. Soaring, you have a counterpart. He doesn't know what's going on right now, but he will in a moment. <clears throat> so we have to save our counterparts in order to save ourselves. Soaring asked. Hades nodded, and the door opened. There's no time to waste," he stated. "You'll all be separated. Good luck." The chosen crafters were separated and sent to the designated locations. Rage appeared in front of a home, where he saw a man who just looked just like him. That must be Gary," Rage said. "I'm going to warn them what's going on." Rage walked over to him. And、Gary backed away in shock. How did you get out of Minecraft? He asked in fear. I came to warn you, Rage told him. The Minecraft gods are coming after you. They're coming after everyone. But I have nothing to do with this. You created me, Rage told him. The Minecraft gods made an enemy out of you, and have set forth an execution for you. Gary stared at, stared at the ground. Where will I go? Somewhere where the Minecraft gods will never find you. Rage told him. Rage opened a portal and they went in. Eurostream landed in another part of the world and gave a low whistle. Never thought my counterpart would let be here. He stated. I wonder if he's home. He checked the address of his counterpart's home. But to his knowledge, there was no one there. That's odd," he said to himself. "The lights are off." He peered through the window and saw a figure. He took out his netherite sword and burst through the door. He tackled the guy, figured out who it was. "Are you a stream?" the guy asked. "How did you get out of Minecraft?" "Are you a stream?" got off the guy, and the guy turned off the on the lights. There he was. His counterpart looks shaken, but otherwise okay. How did? You... So what's going on? The count. His counterpart said. We're. It's time, he said quietly. I need you to get to the bunker quickly. Soaring crash landed in a remote location in the United States. He didn't know what state he really was a part of, but he could sense his counterpart was very close by. It wasn't long until he saw him on the computer. Why isn't my computer character working? His counterpart asked. Is Minecraft broken? Soaring teleported into his room. Hello, he said calmly. It's time. His counterpart was in his forties. Making a living off of Minecraft YouTube content and music, he stared at Soaring, unable to speak. Did something happen? He asked. Yes, Soaring told him. You remember the Scary Spirals series? Yes, his counterpart at, said. That ended in season two. Don't tell me that continued. I'm afraid things continued behind the scenes that. Every counterpart didn't expect," he stated, "which is why you are in grave danger." Soaring held up a hologram, showing him everything that's happening. His counterpart eyes grew wide. Once it was finished, I see," his counterpart said quietly. "You'll need my help. This location that they're planning to converge is where my old stomping grounds used to be." Then we alert the others. Sorin said. <clears throat> the two grabbed their gear, and left to meet up with everyone. 
Irene was in her chambers when she heard Morpheus yelled in anger. I was this close, he yelled. Those chosen crafters slipped right through my hands. Irene, get me my portal. Irene rushed to him and handed him his device. I have done trap after trap to get rid of those wretched crafters, he said. They're like cockroaches infesting my kingdom. Now I'm going to step on them. The portal opened, and he went through it. Be careful, crafters, Irene said quietly. I'm hoping help will be on its way soon. Soaring, his counterpart, Rage, Eris Stream, his counterpart, Exuma, Eve, and Herobrine met up in Minnesota. It was cold and brisk out. Snow covered the area. I just did a perimeter scan, Herobrine told him. No sign of Morpheus and I Irene. Are you sure they're coming to this location? Soren's counterpart nodded. Minnesota is one of the states with the highest supernatural activities, he said. They'll be here. He took out an EVP reader and it spiked to the south. They headed to where the river was and saw a portal open. Brace yourselves, Xuma yelled. Sense a strong order from inside that portal. They heard a heavy footsteps from inside the portal. It grew loud, closer and closer, and then stopped. They waited for a moment. Then a grappling hook grabbed Eri Stream's counterpart and flung him into the air. Soaring took to the skies and grabbed Eri Stream's counterpart from the air. They landed on top of a building and looked at the river. More grappling hooks came at the chosen crafters and their counterparts. Xuma hacked into, tacked some into rubber while it poured chemicals to make them rust away. Eurostream and Rage were doing everything they could to keep the hooks away from Soaring's counterpart. There are too many hooks, Gizmo yelled. We can't keep this up much longer. Hold off for a couple more seconds, Herobrine yelled. I need to find the weak spot in the portal. Herobrine closed his eyes and then ran to, into the portal. The portal closed and then blew up. Herobrine, no! Soaring yelled. Herobrine sacrificed himself to save them, but it cost them. They regrouped at First Avenue, hoping for a miracle. We have to keep moving, Soaring told them. Morpheus will be tracking us. We forward his plan for domination. Now we have to go into hiding. They all agreed and teleported away. Soren looked at his counterpart. <clears throat> I'm sorry for the curse I have brought upon you, he said. Are you kidding? His counterpart said. This is probably the best adventure I've ever had. Now I'm going to need more training. See you around, Soren. They shook hands and his counterpart teleported away. Soren looked at the sky. Hopefully I can rest now. Morpheus walked into the dungeons and turned on the lights. He stared at two people chained up. Two traitors, he thundered. Both who worked for me. I am most disappointed. He gazed at the first prisoner. Tell me, Hero Brian, he snarled. Where will they be hiding? Herobrine raised his head weakly. Go to the nether, he said. Morpheus slammed his fist in Herobrine's head. He turned to the second prisoner. Irene, why would you help them? He asked sadly. They are a lot more delicate than us. They know about what it's like to fight for what's worth. She said, that's why you will lose. Morpheus chuckled. No, he said, I have a plan that will make me win. <clears throat> and the next book in the series will be called War Between Worlds. I hope you guys enjoyed this, books, this book. 
and I'll see you all next time. This is Soaring Majesty signing off.